Um, could you tell me your cultural background when you grow up? Or where do you live and uh, what kind of media you have uh, experienced during your life until now? Sun is asking me about my cultural background. So what I'm just going to say briefly about that is it's complicated because the simple version is that I am a white middle class English person. The slightly more complicated version is to do with the north and south of this country. Do you want me to look at the camera or are you? <laughs> sort of, uh, so I don't know if it's the same where you come from, but in the, in this country, the north of the country is very different to the south. It's a different culture. Um, so I was born in London, and I've spent quite a lot of time in the south of England. I live in Brighton now, but I was brought up in the north of this country, Lancashire, Yorkshire, and so. My experience living in Brighton is that I feel probably more like you than you imagine. I feel like I'm in a different c culture from my own culture, even in the same country. And that is something to do with northern people. I mean, it's, it's all the cliches, but I do think they're true. Northern people are more friendly, they're more open. They, if I stand in a queue for the bus up north I'll talk to people in the in the queue they'll talk to me we just talk to each other even if it's a 80 year old lady or a 14 year old girl or whatever down here people are so determined not to look at each other in case they get into trouble or somebody wants something you try and talk to somebody to just either pretend you haven't said it or that you'll get a yes no answer or something I find that really frustrating People say that Brighton's a very friendly place, and it is in comparison with the rest of the South, but compared to the North of this country, it's a completely different world. So, and also, people in the North of England, there's something about everybody knows that life's a little bit hard, you haven't got much money, it's difficult. In the South, people tend to pretend everything's okay and they've got money, even if they haven't. In the north, everything's just cheaper. It's half price. And people don't have a, a judgment about somebody else because they don't have money. I feel like the south is more judgmental like that. However, Brighton is not really the south of this country. And, you know, it's a generalisation. When you ask about culture, that's a big, big, big question. And so I would imagine it's the same where you're from, that you can't talk about a whole country, because we're talking about Great Britain or the UK. That's four different countries. They're different countries. Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales are four different countries with their own languages and culture. So even within the UK, that's four different countries. But in, within England, there's just so much difference. You can go 20 miles and people have got a different accent. So... I am a kind of mixture of the north and the south of England. That's my cultural background. Um, what kinds of media platform do you enjoy most when you just for hobby or when you go out or when you stay in home? Just okay, there's a, there's a question that I ask people to think about a bit at the moment. Is like the, the phrase is, does a fish know it's in water? Does a fish know it's in water? No, it doesn't, because it doesn't know any different. It doesn't know the difference between the water. It's just in the water. A fish is in the water. And media has become a little bit like that now. It's like people don't think I'm using the media when they get their phone out of their pocket and look at Facebook. But it is all media. We call it social media, but that's become a very big phrase for a lot of things and I have this debate around you know LinkedIn the, the um, LinkedIn is like a a professional pro profile website do you know it yeah. LinkedIn well I don't think LinkedIn is social media so, social media is more like Facebook Twitter Tumblr 
Instagram, yeah, that kind of zone. I I do use all of those. So I, I've got two Facebook accounts, a work one and a social one. Tumblr, Instagram, I don't use Twitter, but I've got SoundCloud and Mixcloud and YouTube and Vimeo. So I've got quite a lot of things that I have on the go and I do use them all. Um, is that what you, is that what you wanted to know? Uh, um, do you watch films or TV programs on your phone or iPad? Or okay. When you just walk, when you walk or outside the home. Okay. I at this stage of my life, I don't have a television, so everything that I watch is on. YouTube or online or on some form of catch up like 4OD or BBC catch up, ITV catch up. So if I'm watching that, it's either on my MacBook or on my iPhone. And a strange quirk of my eyesight, because I am completely blind, my focal point, my focal range is actually there. That's, that's where everything's in focus which is not very useful for anything in life, apart from watching films on iPhones that close is almost like a big plasma screen because I have it so close and I put headphones in. So that's I do watch quite a lot of things like that. Um, but always at home, though. Um, when you watch films and dramas, uh, what do you think about uh, American films and dramas on BBC or cinemas or on your phone uh, in the UK? I mean, on the uh, on the night time, there are some day shows uh, on BBC actually. They show American films like CSI or uh, what was it? Uh, something like uh, Marvel uh, Agents. All right, uh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure I understand where your question's coming from, but I'll give you an answer and see if it's relevant. I... Yeah, when I'm watching TV, catch-up, catch-up TV, usually I either watch documentaries or occasionally I find, a like, a box set series that I watch, usually on Netflix or something like that. So recently that's been Dexter... Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, those are the three that I've watched all, all of fairly recently. And I think the thing about, it's a little bit like the North and South of England thing that I was saying. I think there's a tendency, if you're American or British, to almost think that they're interchangeable. Like, because we speak the same language, it feels like you can watch something American as a British person or a British thing if you're an American person and you understand it but I actually think the differences between our cultures are very profound and sort of hidden in the fact that we speak the same language I mean you come from a different culture with a different language you expect things to be different because the language is different but I actually think the difference between America and Britain is very profound and it kind of gets lost in thinking that it's the same because we speak the same language so, what do I think about American TV dramas? Well, I, I don't really like them, so I'm not really the right person to ask about that. But if I watch Breaking Bad or Dexter, which are the two things, the only two things I can talk about because I've watched them, um, I kind of, in my head, I kind of feel like it's a cultural exchange. I have to think about this as this is a different landscape, a different cultural background, a different way of thinking to mine. So I, I'm almost being a cultural tourist when I watch something from a different country. Now, if I watched a Japanese film or, a, I don't know, a Korean film or whatever, and it was subtitled, I know I'd have to work harder to understand it because the narrative or the plot line would probably be a little less conventional to the Hollywood 
TV formula. It's very formula, formulaic, most of those things. You know what's going to happen at the start of watching any Hollywood film. You already know what the end of it is within the first five minutes. Maybe you have that with your, with your films from your culture, I, I don't know. But it's very predictable. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It's very predictable. Uh, actually, I put uh, the other uh, kind of like him, similar one. Uh, actually, when you watch, you said in the same language wh when you watch in uh, Hollywood films, American dramas. Uh, do you feel any uncomfortable factors when you watch them? Uncomfortable? Yes, kind of like cultural differences or language differences between the American English or British English. Well, most of it is to do with humour, sense of humour. And this is a big cliche thing to say, but Amer uh, American culture is... American mainstream culture tends to be very literal. There's something about the British that we have a weird sense of humour that's, that's less literal, more ironic, sarcastic, satirical. So, what could I compare it to? Mm, I don't know, I can't think of an example at the moment. What's, what is always missing for me in American media is a certain type of sense of humour. Then, um, have you ever travelled abroad before? Mm -hmm. In which country? I have travelled to. I spent some time in Holland. I've been to Israel on the kibbutz in Israel. Been to Egypt. I've been to Copenhagen in Denmark. Yeah, a few different places. Egypt, yeah. Then, uh, do you watch TV when you go abroad at night in your hotel? No. No? You never? No. Oh, What's the point? If I'm in another country, I'm not going to sit in watching television. Oh, uh, because of the language differences? No, just because... If I'm going to go to another country, the last thing I'm going to do is sit in a room watching television. I'm going to be going. I'm going to be out exploring the world. Mm. Um, um. Actually, one thing I would say though is in Holland. I've s Holland is the place that I've spent most time as a country. And I, I didn't watch television in Holland, but I did have an experience of being around other people who did. And what I thought that was amazing about Holland is that. Most Dutch people speak four languages at least, so they all speak Dutch, maybe Frisian is a local, a, a different dialect, they all speak German, they all understand Scandinavian languages, so Norwegian, Swedish, Danish, they can kind of understand it enough to watch it. So there's a big difference between somewhere like Holland, which is a very small country, but if you look at their TVs, they've got French, Spanish, English, Scandinavian, German channels, and they'll flick through them all as if they're just the same language, but they're not. They're loads of different languages. So, that's language is a strange thing. I mean, there isn't any other language that English people can understand. Maybe it's the same for you. I don't know if you can understand Chinese or Japanese or other other languages that are similar but different. Like Danish people can understand Swedish or. Um, Portuguese people can understand Spanish, Spanish can't understand Portuguese, but there's a lot of that in the world. But whereas English, there's no other, you can't understand any other language. But then we don't have to because we make everybody speak English. Uh, when you travel, how about when you're traveling just on the road, on the road when you see like McDonald's or KFC, working like fast food from America, have you ever seen this? Ex what do you think of when you just walk around and see it very familiar with? What do I think? Yeah, uh, I think it's cultural imperialism. That's what I think. We, I think we've come up with a rubbish idea and we've spread it all over the world and it's... It's a stupid idea for lazy people, that's what I think.
Um, do you have any like or dislike parts in British media, uh, like BBC, as uh, they represent represent their nationality? Mm. This is another. This is another really big question. Because so, when you look back at this interview, what you need to notice is that your questions at the moment are so big in general that um, my answers are going to be a bit random. If you were giving me some specific examples to relate to, it would make it a lot easier. But if you're asking me about representations of my culture in the media and how I feel about that, is that what you're asking? Oh, well, actually, I think, um, in my opinion, BBC is uh, one of the most big representative uh, media platform in UK because I can watch BBC World in South Korea, so it's you know, the programs and their news or the way of they communicate. I think they are represent the uh, UK. So. Well, yes, you do because you're outside of the UK. Yeah, so but from inside the UK, the the way that the BBC represents our culture is in a particular way. The BBC has a production style, it has a particular brief to, to be, I mean it's the old school Rethian ethic of inform, entertain and educate, public service broadcasting. You know that's, that's what the BBC was set up on. The BBC invented public service broadcasting which is to inform, educate and entertain. But the tricky thing is if something is made for a local audience or whether it's made for an external audience. So BBC, Wo BBC World is programming made for somebody outside of our country looking in. BBC One, BBC Two, maybe BBC Three, BBC Four are made for people who are already living in this country watching it in this country. And that is different because a lot of British films that are made about our culture that are representing British culture are made for an American market because a British film can't make enough money back in Britain to cover its costs. It needs the American market to pay for it. So when you make a film about British culture but you need people in America to pay for it so you're making it for the American market that's not really British culture fairly represented that's British culture marketed and packaged for an American market so they'll like it and pay for the film but that's not accurate that's a distorted perspective so Britishness whatever that is which is a whole other dissertation in itself is very complicated and varied and it's, it's deep, it's a complicated thing, cultural identity. If you make something about British culture for the American market, it becomes very stereotyped, very stereotypical. It's simplified. It's either posh people or edgy people on the street. It's like there's nothing, in the, if everything gets extremed, that's not even a word. Uh, the last question. Uh, you recommended me to watch uh, the Groot film. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, have you ever seen the both of it from Japanese one and the Hollywood remake one? I've not seen the original one, no. Uh, you only see the mm. Hollywood one. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think of it? Because uh, I watched it and the everything, the whole story was the same, the whole character was the same with the Japanese one, but only differences if the Americans were there. So, what do you think of it? It's um, uh, Because when I watched it, it's I thought it's quite nonsensical, <laughs> but actually I found that uh, the Grudge has a massive profits in Hollywood, 
more than the Grinch in Japanese one. Yeah. So what do you think of it? Uh, well, it's difficult for me to say because I haven't seen the original, but I do think, I mean, what's she called? The Buffy the Vampire Slayer girlie who's in it? What's she called? The actress? The actress who plays the main part, who's, she's Buffy, isn't she? Yeah. What's she called? The actress? Well, I, I can't remember. Well, what was what was interesting about casting her in the lead role of the, of the Hollywood version of The Grudge was that she, she is known for playing Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So she's known as being a heroine character, whereas in The Grudge, actually, she's more of a victim. They kind of did... It was interesting to see her in that role. And I think that was a deliberate casting thing. I, I don't really know what I can say about that, son. It's like... Um, when you remake a film for a different market... I do think it tells you something about cultural reference points. You can see something that, if you take the original and you change it for a different market, not just changing the language, you change the story and some of the reference points and maybe the plot line a bit and maybe even the ending a bit. If you watch any, any film that is outside of the Hollywood paradigm, it's challenging for a Westerner to watch it because we expect a particular story arc that goes from the start to the middle and the end is is usually a moral a moral message everybody lives happily ever after or the baddies get killed and the goodies survive or whatever as soon as you start messing with that formula it gets quite challenging for westerners to watch it and i don't really know i can't really remember in relation to that film but i think that's generally what happens is japanese narratives is very different to Hollywood and so when they remake it for the American market they take out the complicated bits and make it fit that kind of fairy tale Hollywood storyline that's probably I don't know if that even makes any sense what I just said is that useful at all oh yeah, yeah all right love it's something to work with isn't it